Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mom Sirs. What I'm going to do now is to share with you the Magangan Healing Ritual. But before I will be going to that, may we have a tour in Bukod. The Magangan, Mag Magangan Healing Ritual was documented in Tikti Bukod Binggit, a part of the Bukod Ancestral Domain. And let me first introduce you how is that. The Bukod is a municipality, but under the... It was delineated as Bukod Ancestral Domain. We have the Kadi number or the Certificate of Ancestral Land Domain title issued by NCIP bearing number car Bukod 0908 and 080. It has a land area of 41,223.3249 hectares and the IP community is composed of the IP group or ethno-linguistic group who are the Karao, Kalanghuya, and Ibaloy. It has a population of 13,757 in Bukod Ancestral Domain, but particularly now we will deal with the healing ritual of a particular community, which is Tiki. So here, Tiki. The people of Tiki con call themselves Mag Magangan. So this is a small community composed of the Situs and the sub -situs. and you will observe that we have a certain portion here, the Magangan, referring to now the documentation we are going to share with you. So here is the other details of this community because Bukod Ancestral Domain composed of 10, 10 barangays or communities. So we are referring to this so far the smallest uh, that the smallest population. Uh, before going to that, we have where is Tiki, where it is located. It is located somewhere in Bukod, but the people themselves called, are called Magangan. And I am also a descendant of Magangan, so whenever I ask why is, are you called Magangan in Notably, the people from Magangan are different from other people in the community, but uh, not exactly different, but they are, you may observe that they are vocal, they are somehow, I mean, they can advise anyone, they can tell you what is happening with you, and they are sometimes uh, good in politics, in telling stories, what we now call as the metaphor or there are expressions that you may not understand unless you will ask the elders and leaders there. So why are we presenting you this? We have the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act or the RA 8371, which was uh, approved on November 22, 1997. Effective approved on October 29, 1997 in Tokifik on November 22, 1997. This is a law that mandates the NCIP, the office where belong, to protect and promote the rights of the indigenous peoples or the indigenous cultural communities. And what office is mandated is the NCIP. The role of NCIP, it is a national agency responsible for the protection of the rights of these ICCs or IPs. But who are the ICCs? Who are the IPs? We now have the definition as provided by the law. It is a group of homogeneous society, but we have a shortcut definition. It is self-ascription is ascription by others, meaning you can say that you belong to Ibaloy IP group, but if the community will not accept or will not approve, you cannot be an Ibaloy. So now the NCIP is also 
one of the agencies issuing the certificate of confirmation if what IP you belong. For example, you will apply for a certificate on confirmation. You have to go to the office of NCIP. They will trace your for for beers and the origin of your ancestor. So you cannot just say that you belong to Ibaloy, to Karao, or Kalangoya if your place of origin is not identified and also by blood. We have to document the indigenous knowledge systems and practices as provided by IPRA. It has provided some rights, but particularly we will go into this rights to cultural integrity. This is now what we are going to present to you. We documented the Magangan healing ritual last, last year, and it took us almost six months, more than six months to do the processes. Under this right to cultural integrity provided by the law, as I have said, we have all the rights, but we will first discuss this or we will particularly uh, go into that. And after the IPRA or Indigenous Rights Act, the, there was an administrative order that provides the document guidelines which all researchers have to undergo before going to document all of this. This is now the description or introduction for that. Why are the document why are why do the IPs have this? May I share with you the write ups on this? Or is that now? Mm. The IPs, indigenous peoples or indigenous cultural communities, they affirm the way of life. They believe they have their own culture. They believe in the creation of life in existence. And they believe in the supernatural wealth of the indigenous healing power. In fact, they call the person Mambunong and anyone cannot be a Mambunong. He has all the capabilities. And mind you, if you will meet a Mambunong, he memorizes all the genealogies in the people. So when the ritual comes, he has to call or the spirits, he will even mention the genealogy as many as he can. But today, it's rare and you cannot find uh, these Mambunongs now, but there are those who are ascendance in descendants of Pambunong and they are they cannot be all they are busy now being invited by some of these families or clans performing the ritual. Actually this Magangan is a small place or rice rice field located in Magangan. And according to stories from the elders and leaders, this was just a place where they used to have a debate between the upper residents and low residents called the Pasdong and Ipasdong. And most of the time when they will perform the debate or conflict resolution, the people here are always the winners. So. You can observe now that they are vocal, they are expressive, and uh, comparing to the other people in the communities. Before the, this product, we went to, I, before the documentation, finalization of this healing ritual, we went to the place called the Tiki, and we gathered all the, all the folks there. They were the ones who selected the informants. So we have the list of the informants here, the elders and leaders. Although at times they cannot recall all the processes because uh, we know that culture is dynamic. There are changes, but they say that the values are there. And mind you, 
they really believe in this. They are somewhat traditional, but according to them, it is effective and they're doing now. They're also educated. They are working in government, other agencies, and they're professionals, but in their own, in their community, they perform all of this. We have the tammo. This is a healing ritual when someone from the community you had witnessed any accident or, or any bloody accident so that it will not happen, you have to perform this because all of those people, they maybe they have experienced this for how many times. So that's why all of the people in the community believe and they also manifest all the experiences and the sufferings in order to perform this. So when you go to the other places or you have experience, you have witnessed any bloody accident or killing, sometimes they, they suffer from insanity. So in order to in order to prevent this, they have to perform this tamo. There they have an offering, a dog, all the stalls, the you have the necklace, you have the bolo in order to appease the spirits. They also carve somewhat like a person in the display it in this area in a corner and it is performed outside the house. And when performing this you see to it that everything is silent. No one is laughing, no one is making any noise so that it will become effective. During this ritual, they perform also the tayaw, the dance. And before, it is strictly performed by Mambunong, the gifted one, because not anyone will become Mambunong. But now, for being rare in the community, anyone who is knowledgeable and trusted by the community, he can perform all of these things. We are sorry to present the detailed one because it's too long and <laughs> the witnesses, the people there cannot also enumerate all of those things needed. But they are performing it now. Another related to this ritual is the palace. It is to cure thought ache. When somebody suffers thought ache which cannot be uh, healed, by a doctor or through medicine, they have to perform this. How they will kill the dog, they brought it to the house, and someone will perform the dance, the tayaw. We'll see, we'll observe that it is always associated with dancing in order to appease the spirits because the people in the community has to respect the community, the spirit world, in the land. Those are the three things that they come to they appreciate and they talk about in the community. So when it comes to land, you have to take care of the forest. When it comes to spiritual bird, take care of the spirit so that it will not, you will not suffer, they will not make you sick. And it is always a uh, they, are always, they always put this spear because before their only weapon is spear, bolos, and uh, available wooden tools. Uh, there is always Mambunong, the lead man or the one, the leader, a Mambunong, so it makes chance. When it is related to Tot Ek, he will sing something. Uh, this Tot Ek should now be removed from this time because we offered some food, we killed some animals, so please release this person from suffering from sickness and they will observe if there is improvement and they say that it's effective. <laughs> By the way, uh, we have to observe also the way we, we as government employee in as background in as documenter also, we have to we, we do not make joke because we have this GMC, uh, Joint Memorandum Order, Order of NCIP, DOH, DILG, and DSWD, that this culture also must be 
respected even in hospitals. Culture sensitivity, sinasabi nilang culture sensitivity. So even now the hospitals uh, uh, to respect all these requirements from the indigenous peoples. And our example is when they say that you have to give us the navel, yung parts of the baby, because that is part of our community. We have to bury that under our house. A doctor, even in a tertiary hospital, has to respect the IP. Now, and you know, the doctors are being oriented on this matter, says ma'am. Another related to this is imbasadan. <laughs> These are Ibaloy terms. And it is a healing ritual that is performed when someone's air is infected. Yung parang may melty na lumalabas sa tainga. What they do? They get feathers, put it in a bamboo, and they will hang it near the cooking area of the house. They will also say a prayer. And every time we ask samples, it is related to the disease or the suffering of the person who is supposed to uh, benefit from this ritual. If it is about air, they will say a chant just like, uh, you have to free now the person, the tune is like this. Akal mo sakit niyay, ibudos mo sa mayat e Saimayat ipandakdak nato, something like that. Sometimes it's just like a poem being recited by the Mambunong. So those are the characteristic of Mambunong. He can sing, he can memorize all the genealogies, and he, he can say a prayer spontaneously. Another is this dusad. Uh, they observe that there are fruits from a tree those fruits from a tree hit by a lightning usually causes chest pains when it is eaten by any member of the community. So what cure is this? We have this dosan. So it is a perform again by the mambunong, the chosen one or the gifted one. But this time, anyone can do it who is knowledgeable and trusted by the community. They make use of this yes. The three panicles of Palai covered with gavi leaves and it is again hung at the rear end of the roof of the house. So a pig is butchered, it's always butchering of pig or animal and the, at the tip of the bolo or spear, they brush the pig's liver and then gently rub into the stomach of the sick. And they will see the mud mud. Mud mud is a prayer being, or prayer, or it may be a mud mud, just like a prayer, or if it is sung, it is chanted. The balkas. Balkas is the Ibaloy term for belt, is balkas. So sometimes uh, there are sufferings, usually the children. This Ritual is performed to cure a child's diarrhea by feeding the child with rice. And I have also witnessed this. You will only feed the child with simple rice plus uh, the blood from the pig. And eventually, the diarrhea is <laughs> gone. Yeah, I have witnessed that also. It is being performed now. It is practiced by the people of Tiki in some neighboring communities. Anyway, here, if there is no mambunong, anyone can do it as long as the community, as long as the community can approve it. Agas ni Pukdai, we had been asking this, this is impotency when the organ of uh, cannot erectile dysfunction, the other hand, but we went to investigate the whole community, but they cannot name one. Kasi wala na ngayon ang important. Yes, in the perfect, how they do it, they will slay a chick, violently killing the chick, and they will say a prayer, they will bury the chick, and then somehow 
after how many days they will observe the husband, especially those who just uh, were just married, mm. so that the penis will be able to perform. <laughs> they were laughing, but they say that it is true. But uh, this time they are on. They had mentioned two person in the community who had a successful successful healing because of this uh, ritual agas ni pokday oo yung erectile dysfunction you cannot perform kasi yung isa naman is infertile you can perform but you cannot produce oo pasang again we have a ritual perform yung hindi magkakaanak na babae and there are three kinds it, it, it is either perform in pado or in the river it is perform in the open space or nayakayang or it is perform yeah there are two pado in nayakayang how do they do this there are rituals usually they also butcher pig they offer these bronze bracelets to chickens in they call the mambunong again usually the main uh, the common process here is the mad mad or the prayer of the mambunong while doing the ritual the mambunong will also mention something to make the woman uh, bear a child mm. Another is Agas Nisakam. They believe that uh, it is a bad luck doing something not appropriate when someone is legally married. And how does it affect the family? The children are sickly, they suffer stunted growth, they suffer from scabies, they suffer from illnesses. And older animals will die, their businesses will, be, will get bankrupt. In other progress will not uh, there is no progress in the family and to get rid of this they perform this agas nisakam until now they believe in this so sometimes their expression when a married person is involved with other in another relationship is they mention this sakam how do, you, how do they do this? There is tong tong. The community will call the guys or the, the involved parties. And eventually they will, they will advise them. And they will call also the wife of the other man. And if he has three wives, they will call all the... And there is no malice, but he's advised in the community. So what do they do? They share the expenses. They also put an offering again. We have the bolo, we have the kiyag, or the winnower. We have the gabi plant in white blanket. When we were documenting this, mom, sir, we keep on asking, why do they use white cloth in usually black? And they say that there is no other color back then. And that's why the red one belongs to the richer family. Even if doing the dancing, dance of tayaw, they have different clothes for dancing. So for a wealthy family, they use the red one. And for the poorer family, the white one. So there is discrimination also. <laughs> Another is the adang. Sometimes this ritual is performed when a married couple suffers miscarriage or stillbirth or either become sickly. The suspect is suspected to be caused by a marital infidelity there is brief separation so there is a belief that you have to sepa they have to separate first in a place so they will assign they will agree if how many days five days 10 days or 15 days before they come together and it according to the community it is also effective they have to separate first the uh, husband and the wife for a certain period of time before they come together. Another is kasog, and this is being appreciated by the priest. <laughs> Usually, we 
have uh, wedding ceremonies, garden wedding ceremonies in community, and most of the priests know about this. Engaging in premarital sex before the marriage so that we can see that it is a cleansing ritual. Before the, perf before the wedding, prior to the wedding night, before they have to perform this kasog. What is the purpose? It is a cleansing ritual so that the couple, the husband and wife, will have a healthy and a healthy living. Why? Because they have done that earlier before the legal. Yeah. Because it is appreciated in the community. So but those the meat, chicken or dog butchered when it is cooked, the it is only participated or eaten by the those mostly guys in those elders who are no longer childbearing, see, most of them are elders. The young ones are not allowed. In even the couple, they will not partake in the, uh, they will not partake in the food being prepared. So, these elders also, the par participated in the kasog, should not sleep with their husband and wife that night, so that the couple will not be affected. And, it will not be carried because this is like a cleansing ritual. It will not be carried to their family, coming family when. But sometimes the prayer of the mambunong is just like a curse. Parang nakakatakot na words and siguro kung nandong ka is you, hindi mo matik yung mga words na it's, it's not appropriate anymore. That's why it is abandoned. But they are performing this without those mad mad. They will just pray that the couple will have a good family, will progress, and will live forever because they do not appreciate the separation. Sumjang is in Topja. I do not know if you will believe in this. This is a strong antidote to a curse. Because in our community, in now it is being practiced. Meron yung, even you will go to a doctor, you have taken medicines, but still you are suffering. And the last resort is sungjang. You have to perform this ritual in order to, to survive. They call the mambunong, they will call the priest, they will call the pastor in other advisors yet the sickness is there, the suffering, they have to perform this. And as per the testimony from the community, it is also being appreciated and it is being now done, done now. Especially the candidates during this camping time, um, yung malakas ang, they try to destroy the other candidates so that they will not win. Yeah. They do this somjang or topja. And mind you, even professionals, even those lawyers and engineers who oh, are running for any position are doing this. They do it during night time because we have that uh, when somebody comes while the while the ritual is going on, it will no longer effective. It is not effective if somebody just come in. Sokdol, they have the term sokdol. Sinira muna in. You have to perform, repeat the ritual. That's why it is done during midnight in even in the isolated place. Because anybody can, any disturbance can make this ineffective. Sigit, di ko alam kung na experience yung, yung sigit. It is popular. Even the lowland people, they believe in this. May mga taong, uh, you suffer something parang tatai ka or uneasy. And they describe the person as yung sweating 
is na uh, feeling cold and hot also and the person who inflicted this suffering is also not comfort not feeling comfortable so the thing is you have to the use the bangaw my plant na bangaw mabango na parang mentol na tinatanim in the province tapos yun ang ginagawang an antidote of this sigit oh ito na naman bangaw it is a ritual performed when suffers from skin sores or body pains acquired from one touches Sometimes, meron yung elders leaders na nagmumuya ng beetle. And once na inapakan mo yun, may curse kasi in that uh, spit. So, you will suffer. What do they do? They go to the mansibok. By the way, mansibok is different from mambunong. Mambunong is the one who directs, who has all the knowledge. And the mansibok is elder also or leader who can... Uh, who can identify what happened to you. And they can guess. Yes. Maybe you went to a party at inapakan mo yung isang ganito. And mostly 100% true naman. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what do they do? They have this bangaw. Ito, they shall perform the Saudi. They will chew also the beetle with apog, with all the materials there being used and they will just put it on the sore or affected body parts. Uh, ito naman. Another is tingi ting. When a house is burned, it is believed that with the smoke leaves the soul of the owner. Oo, nandun yung mga soul ng mga owner. So, they call back the soul to prevent another burning. Parang antidote din ito. Para hindi maulit yun, they do this thingy thing. So, they have to perform the tayaw or the dance. And they make offering. Tapi is a rice wine. And the tayaw is performed. And the mambunong will say another manmad. So, parang similarly, there is a prayer. And with the presence of the mambunong, parang siya na ang God. Pero they believe in kabun yan, not the mambunong. Uh, Diaw ni Bali, this is a ritual performed when for a newly constructed house. You just you, you cannot just enter the house without this Diaw so that you will stay there. Mm, you are protected and the house also is clean from bad spirit. So before entering a new house, you have to perform this you have to feed the community. You offer also this and you have to perform the uh, dance. Uh, the offer, the tapi, the handkerchief, the bronze, the bracelet, and anything, materials that are valued by the elders in leaders. Uh, this is also to avoid the possibility of thunder or any accident or violence that may happen inside the house. Another is the sari or salshi. In other communities in Kar, they had been performing this, but it is not using the, uh, they are not using the egg. Here, if you have witnessed an accident or something bloody before entering the house, dapat kuha ka ng egg, tapos you jump over it before entering the house. What is the purpose? So that it will not happen to you. You will not bring with you the bad luck in the uh, the incident you have witnessed. That is sari or sakshi. So it is done. This itong egg it is buried before the entrance or the gate of the house. Another is the tawal. I don't know if you are familiar with this. Yung, the soul is maybe thrown out of the body when he falls, he sleeps. Uh, usually it happens to mga elders, leaders, pati yung mga bata, na after falling or 
after the accident, pag umuwi sila, parang di, yung feeling is, ano yun, parang nawala ang spirit nila. So, they have to get their clothes, go back to the place kung saan nangyari in you call their spirit. Ito na naman, bangsal. Ang dami yan. <laughs> Meron yung, they call the mambunong again. Another ritual is using this uh, bangsal. A ritual performed in the morning. At tapo yung above the house. And the reason is, I purpose is to prevent those suffering. Just like infected eyes, headache, lower back pain, or difficult childbirth. They again offer these things. They get the winnower or the kiyag. They put some betel nut and handkerchief. And they call the mambunong with all the bundles of this kogon grass. So actually, it's another prayer again. And if it is related to that sickness, you'll see a prayer that uh, whole, uh, spirit, you may remove this, we perform this, we know that you are satisfied, please bring back the good health of this person. And these materials are just placed, sit aside above the house, near the house. Tapo is just above the house. The amdag again is another ritual but there are two kinds they say that it is caused by a male amdag or a female one actually this refers to parang spirit na iniwan daw na na-encounter mo um, example of this is during the camping period maybe you have heard the story about dr dr piok steve piok uh, a victim of this ambag, they say that he was just a victim of this ambag. That's why after suffering from LBM, he died just after the just after the campaign. So that's all. Thank you. And uh, these are the informants. Actually, these elders leaders are from the place itself, from Magangan. And this is your auntie, Grace Tobias Mindahasinto. When we had been doing this, we got all the details and we edited the write ups and they warned us not to not to expose this, but uh, as per provision of the IPRA, we have to document. But under the indigenous knowledge systems practices, again, guidelines, the write ups the history the writer uh, does not own the right us but it belongs to the community so thank you and that's all